Hello. Thank you for coming. This presentation will be about the JDK VM compiler integration. This is a new experimental module exposed in development builds of JDK 9. It was said something about this module on uh, Wednesday. But I will try to present you something how to use it and uh, give some overview what can be done with this uh, module. Well, as the introduction, the introduction in Java, we have uh, four compilers. Java C, which is source to bytecode compiler. There is a template interpreter, which creates a machine code, but very, very simple and not optimized. There is a C1 compiler. It's a client compiler. And C2, which is server compiler, produces very, very good and fast code, but takes a lot of resources. And So what JDK VMCI does? Firstly, it exposes infrastructure of uh, virtual machine to Java world. It's not a, um, um, it's not the, how to say this, it's not the integration with Java compiler, but this uh, interface for compilers. This means that you can create own compiler and plug it into Java world. The good example is Project Graph. You can replace C1, C2, you can create your own code, maybe something better, maybe something different. Uh, what, you, what you can get from this compiler? Because Java, uh, uh, what you, can, you can install a custom code and replace a machine-generated code. For example, if you think that uh, this, what you have created uh, with C1, C2, you can replace by your own machine code. You can use alternative compilers like Project Graal, which is available on, uh, in experimental phase. You can uh, get access to JVM options affecting the code generation. This is the most important part of the VMCI interface. As in Java, and CI, we have a lot of options which affects compilation to how machine code is generated. For example, there is something like compressed ops, which causes that pointers to objects, 64-bit pointers to objects are kept on the 32-bit uh, fields. You can get information about hardware. This is something you can't get in Java. You can get a, in the simple way, for example, if you are run on Intel, if you are run on AMD, if you run 32-bit platform or 64-bit platform. You can get support for hardware-specific features like registers names and so on. And you've got the most important part, the support for internal data structures. Why this is so important? Because if you generate your own code to compile, virtual, to compile methods, you have to interact with those structures. And those are the boundaries for the, for, for the compiler. Firstly, you have to generate the code which is JVM friendly. So you, those which I mentioned before, you have to preserve data structures. In Java, for example, each object is composed from object header. After this header is a class uh, data, and there are object data. You have to preserve this because probably a garbage collector or something else will try to use those data. Typically, the, you have to preserve uh, class structures and know those class structures, like vtables, virtual tables, interface tables. You have to preserve log semantics. And you have to preserve calling conversion, cooperation with garbage collector, and memory ordering. So those are the boundaries which I want to describe you if you, if you would like to work with the JVM CI collector, uh, with the JV, JVM CI module. Sorry. Okay, and I would like to show you how to use it on my own experiments. It's, well, it's a bit tricky because firstly, you generate a machine code. You don't generate a Java code, you generate a machine code which you store in the memory. You have to bootstrap the all, in, all infrastructure. The very simple is provide to that you get a runtime, backend, meta access, and code cache. Code cache is the place where we are going to install code.
when we get those information, we have to describe a method which we have compiled. We, we create a new object, which is called hotspot compiled and method, when we where we describe a this is what we have done. The most important part is code bytes. So this is where we have our code. Uh, method names, uh, data patches. We, in this example, which I will present uh, to you, there is no data patches. Frame size, ID. And then we have to create a method code. The creation of method code is uh, more tricky because uh, JVMCI is not a compiler. It doesn't provide you anything about, uh, about compilation. It's not even assembler. You can't write with, with JVMCI, move something from one memory address to the other memory address. So you have to create those code on your own. For example, like this. Here, we create a byte buffer with some predefined size, pretty huge, and we set a byte order for native order. This is mm, rather trick because we want to preserve the encoding in the of the integers we are going to expose. So we want to preserve big Indian and Indian encoding. And we here put just only one byte. It's, it's a C3, it's an opcode for return instruction. This is how you go to write, to work with JVMCI on very low level. This method works. If you install this code, in order to replace your own Java method, this method will just return. This is extension of the previous example, where we want to return a value to. I don't want to say a lot about the how we construct this. But this is part of the assembler syntax. So you put the bytes, byte, 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 particular instruction which are executed by CPU. This is as well how virtual machine internally works. It does exactly the same thing. And this is a dark side of the moon of P J VMCI. And this is where we can get the instructions for Intel. If we, there's a book called the Intel Architecture Soft Software Developers Manual, which contains all the instructions. It's, you don't have to read it if you want to do something with this, because it's much more re reference. You want to take some instruction, you go there, and you put this opcode in the byte buffer. Um, I want much more to, s to show you how this works in the real. I hope it's <coughs> this is for example uh, for instance the parts of the code which has been put in the presentation. We are allocating buffer, we are getting uh, uh, infrastructure and we are putting our code. For example, if we here put a minus two, as the response we have minus two. If we put here minus ten, then it's minus ten. 
why the original method is still no why original method is still return to Oh, I think that I've changed the name of this method because originally it was no method, so it was just pure void. Um, well, I think that's, that's all what can be said about this.